Hello, Miles here. I've got a bit of a quiet day today, so I thought I'd show you this Stirling engine generator that I've been working on. Now, if you don't know what a Stirling engine is, very simply, it's an external combustion engine where you apply heat to one end, i.e. here. There's a little piston in here, and there's a piston in here, and it uses the, uh, the science of expanding and contracting gases to create mechanical motion and ends up spinning this uh, flywheel. I won't go into a great deal of detail because there's some very good 3D animations uh, on YouTube showing you how these things work. Uh, also, Wikipedia is good for, uh, for learning more about Stirling engines. Uh, but the reason why I wanted to build this is because I haven't seen a Stirling engine since high school. I remember they had one there and I remember uh, being shown how it worked. And I've seen them come up a lot in like uh, YouTube feeds recently with people setting these things up and claiming you know they can power their entire village off them and it's the ultimate free electricity and things like that and that, to be honest i think that's all a bit outlandish because i don't think they really do make an awful lot of power they're not they're not particularly strong engines but um, i felt compelled to just have a look about on ebay to see if i could find uh, a second hand one that i could convert into a means of generating power and and see what sort of energy you really can get out of one of these things now this particular engine didn't look like this uh, when I bought it. It was really just this part, uh, the engine itself. It's really very much like um, an executive novelty toy, really. It didn't do anything. It was just on a little wooden base, but I took that off. Uh, I, I didn't build the actual engine itself. Um, usually these things come in a kit, and there's quite a few of them on, the, uh, on Amazon and eBay and so forth where you can just buy a little kit, but... Um, most of those that I've seen have been really quite small. So I wanted something a little bit bigger. I know this looks small, but this for a Stirling engine, this is actually quite big. Uh, so someone else has built this, got bored of it and, and sold it. So, uh, so I bought it second hand. So what I've done is mounted it to this plinth, um, like, a, like a base. And you can see all the way around this flywheel, I've placed magnets. And these are actually super glued on but they're in opposite poles. So you've got north, south, north, south, north, south, all, all the way around. The Stirling engine actually came with this little meth burner uh, with a wick, but I decided not to use that because it was, uh, well, for a start, I haven't got any methylated spirit. And secondly, they don't produce an awful lot of heat. So I wanted a bit more, a bit more power out of this thing. So I've put in this little Bunsen burner here. So it runs on a camping gas uh, cartridge and you've got a, a controllable uh, jet here to apply heat to the, the end of the Stirling engine. With heat applied there, the flywheel will spin and it'll, it'll build up speed as long as you don't push it too hard and break it. The idea is that these magnets will pass over this coil. This coil is actually out of a relay I bought, like a central heating control relay. And a relay has an electromagnet in it to um, move the switch back and forth internally, but it also makes a good pickup coil for producing electricity. So as the magnets fly over the, the, the pickup there, it'll generate an AC, uh, AC voltage through the terminals here. So the AC voltage goes down the wires into this bridge rectifier, if you can see that. The bridge rectifier converts AC to DC. They're, they're pretty simple again. I'm not going to explain um, how they work. There's four diodes inside that just rectify the voltage from, from AC to DC. And then the DC electricity goes to the two uh, output posts here that I've put in. So you can uh, you know, do various bits with this we're going to do in a minute. Um, so what I'm going to do first is just get this thing lit, get it warmed up and just show you it in operation. Yeah, just turn that heat down a little bit, otherwise it's going to go mad. There's a lot of uh, internal resistance in this with the magnets going over the coil, and there's no contact, but obviously the magnets are dragging on it. So it does take a few minutes. All right, looks like we're away. It's not going very fast yet, so what I'm going to do is leave it for 
So about five minutes, and then you'll find it's moving a lot more enthusiastically. Uh, given that about five minutes now, it's going about as fast as really I'm prepared to run it. I mean, if I really opened it up, it would go faster, but uh, I don't want to sort of wear it out or, or damage it. Um, so what I've got here is a voltmeter, a multimeter. I can show you what sort of voltage we're getting out. And how clear that is on the, uh, on the camera there. It's showing basically nothing. So if I hook that up to this, The, uh, the wires actually a bit easier. Uh, you can just about see on that showing about 53 volts. That's enough to give you a shock. Now, that sounds like a lot of electricity, but it's. Uh, I can assure you, it's actually. It's not a lot of power at all because there's very little ampage available in that. An example, so there's a 52 volts between these two now. If I touch them together, you'll see that a load on the motor. It struggles to um, sort of fight the, fight the load there. The fact that it slows to almost stall is a good indicator that actually this little coil here really is extracting all the power out of this thing that it's got. I happen to know because I've already played with this once, the ampage in it is very, very low. And I'll just give you an example of some things you can power with it. So I'm just going to go and fetch an electric light bulb. Okay, I've got some bits and bobs here. So it's going even faster now, it's 56.6 uh, volts. That's, you know, that's not bad. Now, I've got a little uh, LED light bulb here. This is designed to run on low voltage. It's a three watt bulb. And I'm fairly sure you'll see that this will not light properly. It'll kind of flicker a little bit, because I've had a go with this before. It'll, it'll give some light off. I'll just uh, try and show you that. So it's, it's kind of lighting, but not nearly as bright as it should be. And the, uh, the engine's under high load there. So it's certainly not producing three watts of energy. So I'll just take it off again. And if we try it with a tiny little uh, LED here, and this is like I think it's a half watt LED. I'd expect it to light this without too much trouble. We'd hope so anyway. Yeah, it's a bit fiddly. Oh, it's a flashing LED actually. <laughs> Forgot about that. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, it's lighting that okay. I think it's half a watt, that LED, so it's not a lot. And the engine's under high load powering this LED. You can see it's slowed right down. So, it's delivering half a watt. Okay, another example, this is a little DC motor. It's actually rated 24 volts. That doesn't mean a lot in this case. Um, it's only a little small thing. I really don't think it's gonna turn that at all. You can uh, rest assured that it won't do an awful lot. No, it doesn't even try to turn. And nothing there at all. Okay. Back up to 60 volts. As you can see, there's not really an awful lot of oomph in this thing. And this is a big Stirling engine. Yeah, let's have a go and see if we can get it to charge up this capacitor. A capacitor 
if you're not familiar with them, in this instance anyway, think of them as like a little battery. Right. They store electricity, not a lot, not for their size, they're actually only store uh, quite a small amount. They're very good for this kind of thing. We hook up this uh, capacitor here. This is a 3000, 33,000 microfarad capacitor. What I'd like to do actually show you the voltage that this will. Um, you're going to be able to see the battery charging, sorry, the, the capacitor. Hook this up. See it grinding to a halt. I have to charge it myself with by regulating it. Can you see that? I hope you can see that. I'm just going to keep connecting the power on and off. I'm going to try and fill this capacitor up. I don't want it to stall, you see. This capacitor will take more energy than uh, than it can give, which is why it's stalling. So I'm just kind of regulating it, not letting it stall. I might find it will just go now. What voltage are we on? Five volts. Okay, it's uh, self-sustaining now, the capacitor voltage is rising. I don't know how well you can see it, but that voltage will be going up and up all the time. So 5.8, 5.9, 6 6.0, 6 6.1. So we're gonna leave this charging now. Um, this capacitor shouldn't go above 40 volts, according to the label, so um, it's probably going to take it five minutes or so. The Stirling engine is going to keep putting power into the capacitor, raising the voltage of the capacitor up until we get it up to about 40 volts. Well, I can see the voltage is just creeping past 40 now. 42 actually. I'll just turn this off. Slow down. We'll just uh, unplug it. It's not charging the capacitor anymore. Move this out of the way for a minute. Okay, so this capacitor is now charged up with the output of the, uh, the Stirling engine there. Just got a final reading on the voltmeter 42.5 ish. You see that? Yeah. Okay, so that took about 15 minutes. Maybe even a bit more. So it's quite a while. So I can show you what 15 minutes of electricity looks like. I use this light bulb here. I'm just going to use the holder, but I don't think I can. All right. So this light bulb will now light at full brightness and stay bright until that capacitor is empty. So that's three watts brightness. And that's it. 
just uh, fading out now. That's it, there's the whole capacitor empty. So about 15 minutes of this turning uh, gives you enough brightness to light that for whatever that was, 10 seconds or something. So it's not a lot. Uh, now, could be people have managed to get an awful lot more efficiency out of one of these things than I've managed to. Um, but certainly, as far as my experiment goes, it really isn't a particularly good way to make electricity. It's certainly not very efficient. I, I don't know what kind of wattage power comes out of this uh, Bunsen burner. It's probably more like about 200 watts of heat there. And in exchange for that, you're getting what's probably about half a watt or probably even less um, from the generator. So it's, it's not a lot. Um, there is a lot of friction in this from the magnets, but then it, I don't really see any way around that. There's not really much friction in the motor itself. Before I glued the magnets on, this did spin pretty easily. That's probably why I don't see these things scaled up into to large scale generators. I can't really think of a way that you could really use this to generate power in, a, in an efficient way. But anyway, it's been an interesting experiment. Uh, personally, I wouldn't bother trying to build one of these to, uh, to power your house anytime soon. Um, do please like and subscribe and uh, leave any comments that you fancy in the uh, space below. And uh, I'll see you again in another video soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.